our COO, he has a software company and he has set up a corporation inside Columbia. And the point is, is like, we're going that direction because we are expanding, continuing to grow. And where is their talent that is cost efficient, but also super hungry and fulfills the core values that we're looking for. And South America is, is an emerging market for sure. Hello and welcome to the Perpetual Traffic Podcast. The show where we talk about marketing, business, and digestive enzymes. I'm Ralph Burns. Uh, easy for me to say. Uh, I've got some <laughs> digestive enzyme problems recently. <laughs> did I say Ralph Bums? Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. That one did get me. All right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be straight here. <laughs> I immediately started thinking of probiotics for some reason. I don't know whether or not yeah, they work. They, that's they, a digestive they enzyme. Yeah, it's a digestive yeah. enzyme. Uh, I'm Ralph Burns, the founder of Tier 11. I'm Kasim Aslam, the co-founder of The Driven Mastermind. And we are very glad. You, you might be not so glad that you joined us today. We'd also love for you to come hang out in our new Telegram channel. Go to perpetualtraffic.com forward slash Telegram. Enough of this digestive enzyme talk, Kasim. Let's get into the show here. So, what is on your mind these days? We're we're gonna do a little bit more of a off the cuff, uh, no agenda. It's like an agenda free Friday. I have a local radio station here that they say hey, it's an agenda free Friday. I've always sort of loved that. And it's some of the best shows that they do, even though it's not Friday for us uh, when this airs, may or may not be a Friday, but. Like what's on your mind these days? Obviously, you're making this transition from being a, a agency owner to now being a mastermind MC extraordinaire, and I will say you are very good at that. Um, uh, Go on, Ralph. Uh, you know, as the grandfather here of of the, you know, uh, I guess it was Alicia that said I'm sort of like her grandfather. I'm like your father. Uh, that would make you know Ryan Dice like the great great grandfather. It's great for me to see uh, how you've come into that role. You've blossomed in that role, and uh, it's a lot of fun to see it. And obviously, we talk about a lot of stuff that goes on in Driven Mastermind, which is the misfit millionaires, and the, the perpetual traffic listener does benefit from that, from all the smart people that are in that group. I mean, God damn it. It's like it's intimidating, I think, sometimes for me, which is great. I love being the stupidest guy in the room. Yeah, Just I always want to be the dumbest, poorest person in every room I'm in. That's, yeah. that's the goal. And that that's should, I think stretch. that should be everybody's goal. That's where you really get stretched, you know? It's how you stretch. It's how you, yeah. it's how you learn. That's how you grow. Um, I, I don't mind challenging people when it comes to something that I disagree with in that, in that group. And even for the people that I really respect and I think they're super smart, I will disagree with them. They, everyone is just cool. Like there's healthy debate that goes on about certain topics and then really, really important stuff that – obviously helps all of us, not just necessarily business related, a lot of sort of personal development sorts of things. But what have you been up to as you're making this transition? What, what's what's top of mind for you these days? I'm going to uh, I'm going to Argentina. I'm going in oh, just a few days. Uh, Buenos Aires specifically. Yeah. Do you have to say Aires? I, right. I try to like, mm -hmm. I figure that's the way, you know, a native Argentinian says it, and so I'm trying to be respectful, but then I feel a little self conscious because I don't get the accent down. So I'm like, am I mocking or am I, you know, is this cultural appropriation or is this like adherence? Yeah. I don't know where the line is, Ralph. I don't know where it is either. I'm, a friend of mine joined this group called Palazzo, and I'm like, that's not really it because I'm married to an Italian. That's Palazzo. Yeah. So yeah, you I got, feel you got disingenuous. That down too. I feel. Yeah, but I'm an Irish yeah. white guy from Boston. I don't have a. But Italian you're married accent. to an Italian. You're great. You're I'm married to a Jewish yeah. Italian, by the way. So, yeah, yeah, that's which a, is a the ultimate combo. Italian. Uh, it really is. It's yeah. like the forbidden fruit of the Italians. But so <laughs> anyway, so you're in Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. Yeah, I'm. Uh, we're uh, we're starting a recruiting agency, and Buenos uh, or Argentina specifically produces the most economists in the world per capita. It has one really? of the highest college. A number of college graduates per capita, yeah. and um, we're we're starting in Argentina and Colombia, and so I'm yes. gonna head down there. And I just, dude, I just want to like shake hands, kiss babies. Uh, I've made the mistake in the past of working in geographies that I didn't really get to know. You know, I was in the Philippines for a long time without mm. ever having gone to the Philippines. Me neither. 
Yeah. And in retrospect, I think that that was a catastrophic error. There was a lot about the culture that I just didn't know. Um, there were things I didn't learn. There were relationships I didn't build. And, you know, for the cost of a plane ticket and a couple of days in a hotel and a fun vacation, yeah. you, you get to really get belly to belly with folks. And so, you know, I guess that's one, if you're going to, if you're going to do any substantive amount of work or business anywhere, um, I think it makes a lot of sense to just get up and go, you know, carve out the time and go. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And the name of the show here is perpetual traffic, but I mean, we're not limited to traffic. We're all, we're, we talk about business. I think this is actually this arbitrage of international uh, talent is the way that I look at it. People say, oh, you're outsourcing. It's non, um, it's the un-American. Like if I talk to my brother about this, he'd be like, yeah. that's un-American. You can't do yeah. that. That's my uncle. You're stealing yeah. American jobs. Come on. They're stealing yeah. American jobs and sending them over to overseas. My, my brother doesn't talk like that, by the way. Yeah. Um, my my uncle talks like that. But it's it's funnier <laughs> to think that he talks that way because I had a yeah. conversation with him last night that I'm still pissed about. But anyway, the point is this, is that there are opportunities. Like I'm a global business. I don't really care where I employ people as long as they are – they they fulfill the core values of tier 11. They get what we're trying to do. They understand the vision, where they are, what color they are, what their political beliefs are, what their religious beliefs are. Like, I don't care. Like, that's what a global organization is all about. Yes, we are a US-based company. We pay taxes in the US, which I'd love to figure out a way to not do that. But the point is, is we're kind of stuck right now. or a Delaware Corp, an LLC now, Tier 11. We've done all kinds of different tax stuff. But the point is, is there's a lot of talent outside of the U.S. And to your point, and this is parallel lines, me and you right now, which is really interesting because I don't think we've actually talked about this, is that our HR guy, even though that's not really what he is, he just loves to be called the HR guy. He's got an actual title, which is a cooler title, but I just call him the HR guy. He, we are now looking at Colombia because we found in Colombia specifically for what we do, there is enormous talent base. And we found this through a near acquisition or merger that we did with another organization where 100 person organization all based in the US and all of their talent is in Argentina. Colombia, and I believe the third company is Peru, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, Peru or Brazil, those are the, the usual Not suspects. Brazil, okay. not Brazil, because that's Portuguese and not as many English speaking, at least in his purview. I have not looked into Brazil specifically, but Argentina. Brazil's great for Colombia. engineers, software developers especially. Yeah, yeah. So the funny thing is our COO he has a software company and he has set up a corporation inside Colombia. And it's, there mm -hmm. is a, actually a lot of stuff that you can do there, but you have to do it correct and legal and above board and so forth. Um, but the point is, is like, we're going that direction because we are expanding, continuing to grow. And where is their talent that is cost efficient, but also super hungry and fulfills the core values that we're looking for. And South America is, a, is an emerging market for sure. Very cool that you're going down there. Yeah. The other piece that I want to bring up, which might be an elephant in the room, and you know, maybe if, if here's the thing is we're, we're opening up channels of communication here, Perpetual Traffic. And so if you want to join the conversation, you have something to say, check out our Telegram group. Go to perpetualtraffic.com forward slash Telegram. We want to talk about this. So yeah. if I'm about to offend somebody, um, hop in. I'd love to have a cordial, uh, if not combative conversation. Here's my opinion. I don't have access to the full spectrum of talent here in the States because some of these, you know, if you take some of these top tier kids graduating from, and not just Ivy League schools, really, it's, you know, it's, it's almost the, 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 the entirety of the graduating class has the ability to go work for an Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Apple, Facebook, uh, making in most instances, more than a small business can afford to pay. Even if I could match the salary, you can't match the cachet. And that's what these the younger folks want to do. And so in so many instances, it's not even about the cost efficiency. As a matter of fact, what I have seen is some of the top tier talent in other countries approaches close to, if not the same cost that you'd expect to pay here in the States. So it's not just about saving money. It's about the accessibility of the talent. 
and what your job could mean to them. Because if you do get your hooks into somebody here, uh, and again, this is where I'm going to get yelled at. I don't think they, I don't think they really view it as the same level of opportunity. Yeah. You know, their their eyes are using you as a stepping stone so that they can get to one of the the Fortune 500 or Fortune 1000. And folks from Latin America look at working for a U.S. company the same way that somebody here would look at working for a Fortune 1000. And mm -hmm. you sort of want to be in that position as an employer. You want to be in a position where somebody feels like working with and for you is an opportunity. Yeah. And you can find and that in emerging markets. To a yeah. certain degree. I think when we both, we probably have the same or similar timelines as far as like, if, you know, right after the four hour work week came out, like everyone was going to India. And we still ha have a team in India. Like that's, that's great, especially on our Google side of the equation. But then, I mean, prior, way prior to that, we built a Filipino team. And still to this day, like some of the people that started 15 years ago, like Trish, I've mentioned her on the podcast a couple of times. She's been with me personally for 15 years. Like that's through mm. a lot of shit in 15 years. Let me tell you, it's through like affiliates, like me being getting fired, like the FTC investigation of like the super affiliates that I thought I was going to be a part of and all these affiliate offers that sort of went down and then building this thing back up, you know, from the the ruins, from the Phoenix rises. I mean, the point is, is like there, she's been through a lot with me and that Filipino market still is to this day, I think, a, a, a great market for certain types of tasks. I think the way that we're moving right now is more towards the South American Model one of the beauties of of South America, and it's Colombia, Venezuela, Bolivia, Peru, is mm. the four. We've been focused mostly on Colombia. So I'm looking at my South American map, but just because we know that there's there's a huge benefit to employing folks down there because of state or country enabled benefits, and if you establish a corporation inside Colombia which you do have to, it's a process. You have to invest in the, in the country in order to reap the benefits. There is a, yeah, and it's very bureaucratic too. They make you jump very through bureaucratic. a lot of Yeah. So you do have to go down there. So I will be going down there. The fact that you're going to Venezuela, I'm really interested to see what no, that I'm doing Argentina. I'm not doing oh, Argentina. Venezuela. Yeah. Not Venezuela. Venezuela is okay. a Argentina. little rough at the moment. I, I was, we, we looked at Venezuela too, and it, it just had some infrastructure issues, but that's also on the list. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and the, the other part to it, so I was trying to get to is that same time zone. Dude, that's time so zone. there's a couple of reasons I really like Latin America. And this is, I'm going to get sued for saying this. Um, yeah, you know what? I think I'm allowed, I think I'm allowed to say this, Ralph. Okay. So if I, if I get us into legal trouble, then I apologize dearly. My father has a South Asian accent. My father's Pakistani. So when my dad calls people, there's a, there's a, generally speaking, negative neuroassociation with the type of accent my father has because we're used to call centers. And Americans get real pissy with call centers. So Americans don't like Asian and East Asian accents, even if they don't like to admit it. I don't care how woke you are. If my dad calls you, in your mind, you're like, All right, what do you want, buddy? There is a connotation. 100%. Uh, the Latin accent could be your next door neighbor. We, we're acclimated to it. And so the accents are more accessible. They're easier to understand, I think, for the American ear. Close to the same time zone. Uh, you know, I just, my new EA is in Buenos Aires, and I think she's four hours ahead of me. Um, and then they're, they're, they celebrate the same holidays we do uh, in the Western world, I should say. Because, like, I've got a huge team in India at Solutions 8. And whenever they're working, we're off. And when we're working, they're off. And there's no alignment whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and so it's just, it's really helpful because culturally the the uh, latin american you know subgroup is really aligned um and so there's there's far less friction and because we're doing a recruiting agency it's 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 less things to sell you know what i mean when i go to somebody who's looking for a va i don't have to explain cultural idiosyncrasies and the time zone change and you know language barriers like it's just it's a lot easier to kind of plug and play so i think latin america works um for a bunch of reasons i've also and I don't know how you've, if you've experienced this or not, but the Philippines for me ran dry the last couple of years. Mm. So many businesses rushed to the Philippines. Like T-Mobile went and put all of their call centers in the Philippines. So did GoDaddy. And so all of the sudden where I used to be able to get a ton of really good Filipino applicants, 
um, the well started to run dry. And I've seen Latin America is, is something of at the moment, especially a few of these countries is a blue ocean. And yeah. dude, it's not just South America too. I mean, I've got, I think three employees right now in Mexico. Um, and there's a ton of expats in Mexico. Like there's just a lot of really cool opportunities internationally if you're willing to pursue that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is a financial benefit to this as well. 100%. I mean, there's, let's not kid ourselves here. I mean, we are in a business where it's highly, especially the agency business. I mean, it's all labor. You're it's basically, labor it's based. like being in construction. Like it's your, a, it's a labor business. hundred percent. Your cost of goods sold is your people. Right. You know, it's not your shipping and your cost of your ingredients and your storage and your, you know, your manufacturing it's people. It's a people based business. And yeah. With 88,000, we just revised this, by the way. There's a new study that come, came out that there's 88,000 agencies, 88,000 plus. I used to say there's 42,000. They recounted Double. all the single man shops. Like there is more competition than I ever thought in our right. space. And the American salary, back to your point, like I have a son who's graduating from college this year. Like he's got three offers. They're all well into the six figures and he's an yeah. electrical engineer. I mean, he's not a programmer, but he's got programming friends that are every one of them is six figures plus. Like unless you're, you basically want to break even as an agency. If your people are costing you that Dude, much, if I paid six figures, I wouldn't break even. I'd be, I'd be hemorrhaging money. Be hemorrhaging money. Like, yeah. That's, I think that's one of the challenges that a lot of agencies are, or a lot of service-based businesses are facing. Agencies just being one of them. So there is some cost efficiencies here, but, um, you well, know, dude, I, retention's higher for all my international employees. My retention's about double. Yeah. Interesting. And the cost of churning an employee, the cost of trying to replace them, you know, the, and, and, and the client cost too, in the agency space when you lose a critical employee. So it's, you know, the cost efficiency is there, but so too is the, the, the timeline. Um, people tend to be a little more committed. Um, and you will see if that remains true as some of their options expand and open up and more and more people, you know, become accessible to this idea, but it's still a really big deal in the short term. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just for comparison's sake, I mean, the average annual salary in Colombia is about fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So if you're a slightly, I, I always say like, what's the average salary in that country? And then if you can double it and or increase it above the average, how, well, like, where do you sort of stand? Like, I always sort of feel oh, like- dude, I, I want to be paying the most amount of money. And this is how you also- Absolutely. Tr- yeah. You don't want to be predatory. Yep. Uh, I go in and I pay the most amount of money anybody in that market has ever paid ever. Yeah, And I, it gets to the point to where, like I'm talking when I go to Buenos Aires, I'm talking to some universities about potentially recruiting some of their, their students. And I've been cautioned against the salary levels that we're offering. They're mm-hmm. like, you're, you're setting unrealistic expectations. And then I say, no, I'm not. Because I'm going to take 1% of the applicants. I'm going to take the best of the best of the best of the best. Right. So I'm actually not even paying too much. I'm paying what the absolute best is worth. Sure. It's the, the, the name of our agency is, is Pareto Talent. It's a Pareto distribution. I want the best people and I'm going to pay them like they're the best, but then I'm going to demand the best. And, and, and part of it isn't, that doesn't mean they have to work an immense amount of hours. That means they have to work smart and focused while they're working. And I think especially with the proliferation of AI, good people are going to become so much more important because a good person is going to be amplified by a multiple and so whatever number you're starting with, with AI being the force multiplier, it becomes an, you know, an exponential force multiplier and bad people are going to be equally amplified. And so you need to be really careful about who you hire, who you bring on. I mean, the, the, the C's and the B's, and we actually had this funny, we had this conversation. Um, Neil Patel. With, yeah, with Neil. <laughs> and I understand where he's coming from and I'm not, yeah. I'm not bashing him at all. I'm a fan. But I think in this particular instance, man, I want to pay... 10x what they could expect to make somewhere else but then yeah. i want to take only the absolute cream of the crop and i want to the hold them a, to the highest standard. a pluses that's exactly right yeah yeah and dude you yeah. change people's lives i did this you do. i have you a transform young man who, their lives yeah. absolutely I, there's a there's one example of a billion but there's a young man who works for me at solutions i, I won't say his name because i don't want to embarrass him but uh he makes nine times literal nine times what somebody in his role would make outside of our agency. And I know this because I hired him away from a uh, Google ad agency that um, subcontracts on behalf of Google. And so he makes nine times. 
And I'll even, I'll share some numbers. They were paying $500 a month for an entry level specialist. He's mm -hmm. making $4,500 a month now. Here's yeah. what's interesting. He bought his parents the first house they've ever owned. Yeah. He bought his parents the first house the family's ever owned. He bought himself a badass motorcycle. Like he's, dude, he's living the dream. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And he's, but, and he manages one of my biggest clients and yep. he is a triple PhD assassin mm -hmm. worth every penny I pay and more. And yep. he's one example of, you know, when I sold Solutions 8, we had almost 100 employees. So pay because you can't afford to pay so much more than the market might be willing to bear, but then hold the line and, and, and make sure your expectations are high. I think the flip side of that is that you pay, you want to pay more, but you only pay more for the absolute best of the best, Correct. which goes back to the hiring process has to be really dialed in. That's exactly right. And I know we both brag about our hiring processes. Yeah, I got the best I, hiring process. In the I've got world. the best hiring process. My, my hiring process will eat your hiring process. My hiring process alive. will kill your process every time. <laughs> we've got to do a, we've got to do a hire no, off. It's good. Like, yeah. A hire yeah. off. Yeah. Well, we'll just, we'll both go try to hire for the same role and then we'll, we'll get those people <laughs> together and or against each other and we'll see like who wins the death match. Well, maybe, you know, when you start your personnel agency, we'll just sort of have to hire some, some of those people and see if they're actually up to snuff. See if they're but, up to, yeah. See if yeah. they can do the job. Let's see if they can do the job. Yeah, we're only doing up. VAs this start, but we'll do, we'll do more specialized roles someday. But my point is that you can go higher, higher in the market and not blow the market out if you're getting the best of the best of the best. And you okay. have a really good filtration process to get to that point. So for example, we just hired a new uh, client success owner. I was her fifth interview after 500 applicants mm. and five other steps. Like I was almost apologetic by the time I get on the phone with her and she's, she's great. I mean, she's starting like in a week or so. But, you know, I mean, my, my, inter my interview is like a stamp of approval, like making sure the values are there, making sure she understands the vision. Like I trust my team inherently to be able to get to that point. We don't, do we need five interviews? Well, this position, this is a, probably the most important position that we have inside tier 11. Second only to, you know, our VP of marketing, of course, because Tom Meredith is post. listening. Yeah. yeah. Pod, well, no, no, no. Just because Tom is listening. <laughs> here quietly in the background. Um, and he's got our website that's going to be live on March 1st, which is fabulous now that I've announced it. To I'm so the world. excited no, about No that pressure on Tom at all. Yeah. But anyway, so the point was, is like we got to this point and she is absolutely amazing. And we have another client success owner that we went through the same process and she has been tremendous and we sort of patterned it after her and then found this other individual because it's a relatively new role. We've restructured a few things. The point is, is like we're hiring her at the top of the market mm. for sure. But the point is, is our hiring process got to the point where we got the absolute best, literally 500 applicants down to three. We hired one really in the second one. We might hire sort of at a later date. Um, yeah, I but think you have to pay the most in order to put people through those hoops. Nobody's going to yes. show up to a fifth interview unless the, you know, the job is an aspirational the payoff job. Is there. The payoff right. has got to be there. So, and I think that is absolutely the case in that, you know, if you're overpaying in some of those more developed countries or, or how do we say this? Not developed countries, but South America is- We, we, we call them emerging nations. Emerging nations. Yeah, okay. I know we're going to piss somebody off somewhere. Dude, my my uh, wife has a degree in international human rights and she says that's the nomenclature. So we've got a stamp of approval from somebody who's- no, I didn't even write it down. So I'm just going to say <laughs> South America uh, from here on out. But yeah, uh, you can do that without blowing out the market. And I think the the market got blown out a bit in India and in the Philippines. Well, dude, I'd say God bless them because I've had people challenge okay. me on that too. They're like, oh, what happens when you go there and you pay too much and it you know it, it poisoned the well for the rest of us and all of us have to pay more? And I'm like, good. good. What happens when you have to pay poor people more money? Like, oh. Business you know, is competitive. Yeah. Right. I mean, we all have the like, you know, the abundance mindset here, but business at the end of the day is competitive. And if you can hire labor, that's half the cost, even three quarters of the cost that gives you a competitive advantage. And if they're the best of the best of the best, like how much greater all of a sudden are you as an organization? 100%. Like, are you American, you know, because you're hiring people in South America? You know, I don't think that's very American there, Cousin. I still but feel American. I st I feel American because, like, I pay my tax dollars. Here's like the I thing about American. America was founded on a system of, of meritocracy. 
Yes. Right? Like really at, at our Correct. root, it's like what's best, what's top, what's fastest, what's strongest. What? Yep. And that's why – do look Darwinism up, think, of capitalism. I swear to God. The, our, our, one of our top entrepreneurial heroes is Elon Musk. Yeah. That dude is as American as somebody could possibly get. And but he's not, not American. American. You know what I mean? But he's we don't South care. African. We're like, oh, the minute, the minute you've done what he did, we stamp just American on his back with yeah. or without his approval. Right. So no, I think doing what works, that's American. I think trying to trying to be nimble and 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 you know solve problems and uh, be ambitious, like yeah, what is what is this weird entitlement that we've moved into? I don't know. That, yeah, that doesn't feel red, white, and blue to me at all. You know what it actually does? Like we're ninety percent, I would say eighty percent American based companies that we serve. What we're trying to do is help them scale and grow and ultimately they need to be purpose driven and we want to help them achieve their vision. That's pretty American helping them do that. And the means in which we do that is we hire the best talent wherever we can find it. Right. That's incredibly American, I think, but I'm not going to like get on the national soapbox here because I mean, I mean, I love the United States. Don't get me wrong. But my point is, it's like, I'm here to grow a business and help my clients. And if that by extension helps America, that's great. We're not like America first. And that's like our goal as an organization. Maybe we would have like a different kind of company if that was the case. My point is, is like we want to help purpose-driven businesses achieve their vision. And we happen to do that with the best talent we can find anywhere. And that includes people in South America. That includes people in the Philippines. That includes India. We've got 28 countries at Tier 11. Like we're totally, totally international. We have an entire like other division in Serbia, like we haven't even talked about like Eastern Europe and like yeah. that talent pool there, especially on the dev side in Dude, Bulgaria and Romania. My entire life came out of Ukraine. I got, oh he's here God. now. He lives here. He's That's amazing. right. Yeah, I yeah. met him. He's amazing. Like we he's have amazing. a scrum master who's from Ukraine. She's incredible. Yeah. It's like what? the most <laughs> blunt humans I've ever met in my entire life. Love it. Yeah, I do too. He's just like, this is, here's what you suck at. And I'm like, thank you very much <laughs> for your very honest I feedback. appreciate your candor. You know, yeah. if you were an insecure, uh, you know, prima donna entrepreneur, that would piss you off. But yeah. like what you want as an entrepreneur is you want the best organization you can possibly build. And you do that with whatever talent. And sometimes that means radical candor, which is one of our five core values. And I love that. I love radical candor. When somebody tells me I suck, I'm like, really? How so? You know, if I was totally insecure, uh, that would yeah. be a different story. So, yeah, insecure entrepreneurs make less money. Yes, they do. They're less successful and they less have probably have less impact. It's my guess. Right. If you enjoyed the conversation and you want to contribute, go to our Telegram group, perpetualtraffic.com forward slash Telegram. Let us know what you think. Ralph and I are in there on a on a daily basis, and so yes. we'll you know chop it up, chat it up. We'd love to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, always, as we always say here, leave leave a review or a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. Apparently, we're lagging a bit on the Spotify app. Oh. Awesome. Did you know oh, this? No. Like the not. kids. Yeah. The chillins. Right. The chillins. Yeah. They're yeah. not listening to us on Spotify. So if you especially leave a review over on Spotify and start listening on Spotify. And I'm going to migrate all my podcasts over to Spotify now that I know this little piece of data yeah. on us. And of us course, one listener, bump. give it that one more listener to put us right. over the top. And of course you can always uh, watch us over on our YouTube channel. That's perpetual traffic.com forward slash YouTube. Make sure you follow us on all the socials myself over on LinkedIn. I've been doing a lot of guitar solos these days. Dude, I watch LinkedIn. your solos. I watch them on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, uh, they're great. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's just like whatever. I just like put up the camera and I just I just play. Riff. Yeah. So people seem to like it for whatever reason. So if you want to see some guitar solos or whatever, head on over to my Facebook or I post them on LinkedIn. Kasim is on all the socials as well at Kasim Aslam. And of course, all the resources that we mentioned here on today's show. Columbia annu average annual salary in dollars. We'll put that one in there or over at perpetualtraffic.com as per usual. So on behalf of my awesome co-host, Kasim Muslim, peace until next show. See ya.